let's go ahead and jump into it. We got ourselves the um, afternoon games, the afternoon late games. We got four of them, Jeff. So Sunday late games, first one that we have here, it's going to be a birdie party. It's going to be the Dirty Birds versus the Bird Gang. Um, Falcons, four and five, Cards, one and eight. And it's funny, two weeks ago, the Cardinals were celebrating in Tampa Bay, first place in the uh, NFC South. Things looked like they were on the up and up. You know, Desmond Ritter got pulled out the game, so everybody got really excited about what's going to happen next for this team. Bring in to Taylor Heineke, you know, to to get us back to the to, – to, to lead us for the rest of the year. I think that they'll be going back to Desmond Ritter fairly soon, Jeff, to be honest with you. Desmond Ritter is a guy that I feel like is going to give you a way better chance to win than Heineke. Heineke's already proven us that – He's not that good of a quarterback. He's he's okay. He he has moments, but you know, um, Desmond Ritter isn't that great. But I prefer him over Heineke, to be honest with you, because he does present an element of a guy that's really trying. And I don't think he would have lost this game against Minnesota. The guy plays much much better at home. But I know the court coach wanted to teach him a lesson because he can't stand upright. Guy got sick sacked six times in the first quarter. So they just – it's just, you know, for now, we're just going to take a little break off. I understand that part. But all in all, Falcons, I feel bad for you because somebody's coming back uh, to the league Sunday who's been out for some time now. And we know the havoc he, call, he caused a few years ago. And we know how he's one of Jeff's favorite fantasy guys as well too because – He's taking care of Jeff pretty much every single season. He's been healthy as well, too. And none other than the man himself, the Heisman Trophy winner, number one pick in the uh, draft, and he was seen as the next big thing in the NFL before his coach tattletailed on him about uh, the playbook. So other than that, Kyler Murray will be back in the house on Sunday. And you know what? He's going to go ahead and hand the Cardinals their second win of the season. I'm taking him straight up on the uh, minus 110. When you can't get no value on the Cardinals, you got to just bet them, Jeff. When you can't you know, get your I, trust, you got to bet them. Uh, I, something smells here, though, though, because, I, you know, I, I, I get the fact that, you know, here come the, the Dirty Birds, four and five versus a one-win a one -win team. I thought there'd be more of a tick with the return of Murray. Uh, my true number initially was Atlanta favored by three with a 41 and a half. It's now one, actually one and a half at circle with a 43. Um, I too took uh, uh, the the bump. I took uh, the the cards plus the two minus the 120. We bought the hook. Um, you know what? For fantasy purposes alone, you know, listen, no one thought Bijan was, you know, not. B. John Robinson was a generational running back, like Kyle Pitts is supposed to be a generational uh, uh, tight end. And what they're doing to B. John is just mind boggling. Uh, 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 you know, uh, he's had like one touch inside the red zone in the last bazillion years. Uh, uh, they bring in Algier, they'll bring in Corderell Robinson. I, I, I mean, Anyone but Bijan. They're just trying to out trick themselves. In comes Heineke, as you said. You know, every here comes the, what we needed. Well, what they need is a win to stop the bleeding, to get back to five hundred, to keep their false playoff hopes alive. I think the little engine that could Kyler Murray uh, will will jumpstart the Cardinals probably till their last win of the year. Uh, give me the Cardinals plus two. I think that they're going to sneak out a win outright here. Mm -hmm. It's going to be interesting. This is home, not home cooking, a perfect spot, though, for Bijan owners, uh, not to just get one touchdown, but to get a couple touchdowns. So for fantasy purposes, I think Bijan has a big day. But uh, for what we're here for, give me the cards plus two pops. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. You know what? It's going to be I think it's going to be one of one of the more high scoring games of the season. Let's just say that. Because I think that you got good, you got good playmakers left and right all over the field, and it's going to be a lot of fun. What are we playing for? Well, the Falcons are still playing for a playoff spot. 
what the Cardinals was playing for. You know, keep it real. A draft. The card, <laughs> hey, but the card. Hey, at the end of the day, Cardinals are playing it smart. You know that they're eyeing linemen. You know that they're not saying, "Oh, let's go get Caleb Williams." They're, they're not even in the Caleb Williams market right now. But we know that there's other teams in the Caleb uh, Williams market right now, like the Giants. You know what I mean, and the Pats. But I think that they're all going to be chasing Drake May, dude. To be honest with you, but we'll 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 have draft talk soon sooner rather than later. Um, Lions six and two, Chargers four and four, plus one and a half. And I called it, Jeff. I knew it was going to happen that they were going to make the Lions a uh, favorite in on the West Coast uh, against a team that's just won two in a row and have won these games by more than twenty points and. They've done it on prime time as well, too. I'm just going to say this because I'm going to let you kick this one off. The Chargers are the gift and the curse of the NFL because how can you be that damn gifted and that damn cursed at the same time? It's just it's mind-boggling that this team can lose two in 